When evaluating whether a vehicle will roll over, there's two key factors we need to consider. Firstly is the location of the centre of gravity. Somewhere towards the, on the centre line of the vehicle with an unladen like this, probably down quite low, uh, not far above or at chassis height. The second point is the outside of the base of support, which in the case of a cornering tanker will be the outside edge of the tyres on the outside of the vehicle in the corner. So if we're looking at an empty tanker, this is the best case loading scenario. The center of gravity is, is as low as it can be and there's no moving product causing it to shift laterally. There are some factors that can make the center of gravity worse. So tanks with a higher barrel height or higher ride heights on the suspension, bigger wheels and factors that can make stability better. So typically a heavier prime mover will generally improve the rollover resistance of any given combination. So if we have a look now and we see at its rollover behaviour, we can begin tilting the table. We'll go up to 10 degrees, 15, 20, 25, 30. If you listen very carefully there, you can actually hear the weight coming off the tyres on the uphill side of the vehicle. 30 degrees, 35, and at about 36 degrees there, we're actually just coming off the, off the ground. And at 37 degrees, we roll over. Looking now at an essentially full tanker. We've still got a bit of an air gap at the top of the barrel, known as ullage, and this isn't uncommon. You might have a 30,000 litre semi-trailer, which due to axle load limitations, is only allowed to carry 27 and a half or 28,000 litres in practice. This means that the center of gravity of that combination has now moved up significantly. We'd expect it to be just down from the center of the barrel with most of the impact being the weight of the milk rather than the weight of the empty trailer. Now let's have a look at how it performs on the tilt table. We're at 10 degrees, 15 degrees, 20 degrees, 25 degrees, at about 27 degrees, I'm hearing the weight coming off the uphill wheels on the prime mover. At 29 degrees, we've now got air under all three axles on the trailer. At 30 degrees, we're just starting to see the wheels lifting off on the prime mover. And at 31 degrees, we've gone over. So we've seen how the tanker rolls when it's empty, and we've seen how the tanker rolls when it's full. Now let's put our mind to how it's gonna behave when it's half full, because it's probably not what you think. So here we've got a half loaded tanker. This is pretty much at your worst case. You've got the most mobility of the milk inside the barrel and that cargo now has enough uh, mass to significantly influence the stability of the vehicle and the center of gravity has come up quite a bit from the unloaded state. So let's have a look at how it performs. We tilt up, we can come up to 10 degrees. Try and make it nice and slow so we're not, this is representing almost like steady state cornering, so a long sweeping on ramp, as opposed to a series of S-bends. 15 degrees, 20 degrees, 25 degrees. About 28, we heard the weight come off the inside wheels a little bit earlier than the unloaded state. 30, oh, so about 32 degrees, she's rolled over there. So now we've seen how the tank behaves when it's empty, when it's full, and when it's half full. Really the takeaway here is to think about how your tanker is loaded for each leg of your journey. As you're releasing the park brake, ask yourself, how much milk is in that tank? How do I not need to drive the vehicle in response to that? So I hope you found that useful. For more information on dairy tanker safety and on the general transport industry, visit our website at nti.com.au.